Hi guys, welcome back to this series of Emmy Broker questions and answers. Um, today's question comes from Richard on Twitter, and Richard says, Hi Dave, are you thinking about making any more videos in the future? If you are, two topics come to mind. Using ad to composite and scaling in and scaling out of positions. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's an awesome question. And I'm really, really glad you asked that one because add to composite uh, is possibly one of the coolest things that you can actually do. You can actually create your own, uh, your own indicator from the universe of stocks like the uh, S&P 500 or the ASX Top 200 universe of stocks. And it, you can turn it into your own indicator here to give you, you know, ideas of what these stocks are doing. It is absolutely awesome. And I'm going to show you how to do this one. It's the new 52 week high, 52 week low index, something that you might have heard about. Um, Alexander Elder introduced it into, in his book and he used it to see divergences between the index, for example, you know, if the index was going up, but the, um, but his 52 week high or 52 week low was going down, then you know, it might be a, a divergence that you'd look for to, to sort of sell into, for, for example. But this one, it's, it's a little bit more complex. I will show you how to do it. Uh, all we have to do for starters is jump into our analysis window and formula editor, of course. Now, the first thing we do is, um, is probably the most simple, and that is to just set up the buy or sell condition for our stock. This is what we're looking for. Uh, all we're looking for is a high greater than the high of the last 250 days with one less day and a low less than the low of the last 250 days as well. Now, once it's set that up, so in other words, when we run this, it's going to count how many of those high stocks there are and how many of those low stocks there are. And then this little function here, and again, we can call this anything we like for, for simplicity's sake, We've called it high, low difference. And that's just the difference between our high and our low function that we've just set up here. So again, you can set up any rules you like, but just remember that it's going to count them. Um, it's not going to actually take the buys and sell signals. Uh, so the next thing is the most simple thing, and that is our buy equals zero. So the way we're doing this, we're going to use the scan feature and we just need to set buy as a zero so it doesn't um, mess with anything um, in our actual code. So it's not looking for buys because that's not what we're looking for. We're just looking for a count of these things that appear. Now we can also add filter equals zero just so that there's no data coming through for explorations as well because what we're going to be doing is using the scan function and, um, and that's how we create the, the index and we don't want anything else to be getting in the way in the meantime, basically. Now we can check out our actual add to composite code. And if we type in add to composite, uh, it turns blue, which is what we want. That means Ami Broker recognizes it and we can open up our bracket. Now the first thing it's looking for is the array that it wants us to track. Now we've created our array, which is high, low, difference which is basically up here, which is what we've created. High low difference is the difference between all of the highest highs and all of the lowest lows, which we figured out previously. And if you're wondering what to put in here, just open up the bracket and it will, it will usually tell us the next field is the ticker field. So we, and it wants it in inverted commas as well. So we open up our inverted commas. Now we can call the ticker anything we like because we're actually creating this ourselves. What, um, what they recommend on the Ami Broker website is to actually start your ticker with a little squiggly bit, or a, I don't know what they're called. Is it a, a tilde or something similar? Um, either way, I think what that does will actually just make sure that we're not interfering again with any of our other tickers. But once you have that, you could call the ticker anything you like. Um, literally, uh, probably for our purposes, what we would like to do is call it something meaningful so that we can find it in the future as well. And maybe we can call it new high, new low index. Uh, that seems fair enough. We'll close off the inverted commas, give ourselves a comma to separate that little bit. And what we've got next is the field. So the field, and again, that's in inverted commas as well. What that means is it's our open, high, low, or close. But apart from open, high, low, or close, which would just be either O for open, H for high, obviously, um, L for low, or C for close, 
Um, you can also use X. Now, X is a combination of all of those open, high, low, low, close values. The last one you'll notice is flags, um, ATC flag defaults. Now, this is where last time I checked out the actual website um, at Amy Broker. Fantastic website and great support there as well. If you just type in Amy Broker, um, add to composite, it will come up um, first thing there, so you can load that straight up, and that has all of the information um, about this particular function, uh, and including flags. So there are different flags that you can use. The default is actually seven, so technically we don't have to put anything in here at all. We can just close this off um, like that, and that would complete it. However, there are different things that you may want to do, um, like delete values previously, um, there's, you can exclude all other tickers from a group or from group 253 if you use flag 2. So they've just got numbers. Probably the easiest way to, to do this is if you want to include one of those things, um, which basically gives more instructions to our add to composite code, just put the number in. Uh, probably that is the easiest, easiest one. Now that we have created our add to composite code, we actually want to bring that out into our, into our current piece of code here. Now to do that, we simply assign this index that we've created to an array. So to do that, let's call it our new high, new low, or NHNL. Now with an array, you can call it anything you like. You could, again, you know, um, you could call it happy, days, Oop. as long as it was all one word, obviously, um, and, you know, just the regular regular rules apply there. But again, you know, we'd sort of want to call it something that's meaningful that we can use in the future. Um, new height, new low, for, this, for the purposes of this video, should do us just fine. Now, what do we do when we want to bring a foreign ticker out of, you know, out of Amy Broker, even if we've created it ourselves, and we want to bring that into our current code? we basically want to use the foreign function. So foreign, if we type foreign, it turns blue, which is a great sign. It means Amy Broker recognizes it and we can open up our bracket. Now, it also gives us all of the information that it's looking for. And again, in inverted commas, I have gone through this previously, but I'll just really quickly go through it here as well. It's looking for the ticker that we want to, that we want to put in. And what, what we want to put in is the ticker that we've just created, which is this one here. So we'll put in new high, new low index, which is really cool. Um, the next one we're looking for is the field. So the field, we just want the closing price. And the last one I think is fix up true. We can usually do without that, but you know, that's the default, is true. Now, once we've done that and we've turned it into an array, then we can plot it on a chart. So, you know, we're actually going through quite a lot of things here, um, but once we're done, you'll be able to see it. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got NHNL, which is the array that we're looking for. So I just typed in plot, it turned blue, happy days. Uh, I open up the bracket, it tells me what it wants, and we want NHNL, that's the array that we've created from that foreign ticker there. Um, now we can call this anything that we like, and this will just be our new high, new low index. It doesn't have to be all one word, this is just a, a script basically, um, uh, basically just words that it's going to appear as. It's looking for the color as well, so let's Here's the color here that it's looking for. Now to do that, if we just type color, um, let's try any color. So if we try color green, great. So it turns bold. That means Amy Broker recognizes it and it will actually appear as green on our chart when we, when we plot it. So that's really cool. You could try out any other color there as well. I think Amy Broker has a general list if you Google it. Now the next one says style. So we just type style again. Um, there are many different styles, but line is what we're looking for here. The last part we don't really need to worry about, so four zeros, and that ends the code there. Now if we save that, and if we check the code, and just make sure that everything comes up okay, it does, so there's no errors, that's really, really cool. What we want to do now is actually, we can either send that to our analysis window, 
Um, I've got it here already just in the old automatic analysis. It's analysis, old automatic analysis. You've got the new analysis as well. Both do the same thing um, as far as I understand. Here is where we actually create our index. Now, we have to select the, the the universe of stocks that we want to be measuring. For me personally, it's just going to be the ASX top 200. Um, you could use the S&P 500, you could use the FTSE 100 list. Any sort of universe that you are trading personally or that you want to measure, that's what you check under defining your um, your universe there. Now you also want to look at the, the date range. Uh, we could really go from 2000 to 2015. Probably that's the easiest, the last 15 years. You could do longer or shorter if you really, really wanted to as well. Lastly, we want our settings to be just daily because we've set it up as 250 days. Now, of course, make sure you have the code that you've just that you've just coded selected. And once you do, just click scan and that will do all the work for you. You'll notice that not much happens when you do click scan. That's because all of the work is actually happening in the background. It has actually created that uh, that ticker for us right now. And to actually check that out, all we have to do is jump over to charts here. And what do we call it? Uh, our new high, new low index. So that's the code that we've just created. And that's where I've saved it personally. Now, if I right click on that and click insert, then here it is. So here is the actual index that we uh, that we created. And it's the right color and everything. So that's really, really great. Um, I've got it on BHP. And as you can see, it fluctuates um, currently. You know, the, the difference between the highs and the lows is uh, on the ASX 200 is um, you know is positive or negative at any one time. Now, of course, once you have created that new high, new low index, you can put it into a trading system or that sort of thing as well. So really great stuff, and there are so many possibilities. Guys, I hope this has helped you just a little bit. Have a great week. Stop by the site if you get a chance. It's asxmarketwatch.com. There are heaps more free videos and free courses as well. It's really, really great. Happy training until we meet again. Bye for now.